Hey everybody on YouTube, this is Kyle Snyder once again, aka Eclipton, and I am doing yet another NFL Top 10 list. This time I am doing Top 10 Draft Busts. Now, the, of course, the draft is coming up next month, and of course, we all know that there has been a history of teams, teams really picking flops for their first round or second round picks, but... Anyways, I thought I'd do this list as a reminder that you can't, you can never tell if someone's going to be a big hit or a big miss. Anyways, let's get started. Number 10 is Heath Schuler. Heath Schuler was drafted during the start of the salary cap era in the NFL. And really the main reason why he flopped so much is because there he was the pro subject of a new type of contract at that time called an options buyback contract which prevented him from participating much in in practice in camp and it it really diminished his performance on the field the washington redskins and basically flopped with a humongous experiment at the start of the salary cap experiment. But fortunately for Heath Schuler, he managed to find success in a second career as a politician. Well, it's good for him, but bad for us, obviously, if you know what I mean. Anyways, number nine, Andre Bruce, a defensive end for the Atlanta Falcons. Basically, what made Andre Bruce... A bust is because the Atlanta Falcons really had no one else to pick. They tried to trade away their number one draft pick for the 88 draft. I believe it was 1988 in which Andre Bruce was drafted. I could be wrong, but he was hyped up to be the next Lawrence Taylor. They tried to get rid of the number one pick, couldn't. So they had to go with Andre Bruce. And long story short, he couldn't live up to the hype of being the next Lawrence Taylor. He couldn't play anywhere near Lawrence Taylor's level. And not to mention many off-the-field issues he was dealing with hurt him as well, you know. Having trouble with paternity suits, getting arrested for robbing a pizza guy with a BB gun, etc., etc. You know, he played for the Raiders after the Falcons, but once again, couldn't live up to the hype of being the next Lawrence Taylor. Number 8, Charles Rogers, a, ride, a wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. And oh boy, I mean, this was possibly the biggest flop for a wide receiver or to pick in the first round of the draft. I mean, he had collarbone injuries. He failed multiple drug tests. He wasn't really that producive of a wide receiver. It's like, I mean, yeah, it wasn't the Lions' fault that they couldn't detect the failed drug tests at first because they didn't... Because it started in college, I believe, and, you know, the Lions didn't find out about that until later. But, yeah, he was a bad choice for a wide receiver. Let's see, number seven, Arch Lister. He was a quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, and what made him a big flop is that he could not win a single game as a starter. And he got caught in a gambling scheme, which ultimately led to him being banned from the NFL for life, and he's faced multiple convictions for his sports gambling and yeah moral of the story don't gamble on sports ever unless you want to lose a lot of money or you want to get caught and put in jail let's see or you want to be banned from a professional sport for life yeah anyways Number six, Kijana Carter, a running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was hyped up to be he, the best running back in his draft class, but during the preseason, he tore his ACL and never really could recover from that injury. He like he managed, well, of course, he managed to recover it, but he could never play at the level that he used to while in college. And let's just say it was a lot of guaranteed money wasted because of that torn ACL I mean yeah a lot of players are injured reprone so does that make Kajana Carter a draft bust I think it does I mean to some would they would say no if he didn't get injured he would have played so fantastically but I mean if one is injury prone at the start of his NFL career and remains that way throughout his NFL career in my definition that is a draft bust Anyways, number five, Rick Meyer, a quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. 
he was hyped up to be the next Joe Montana. I mean, during, I mean, it, I mean, a lot, there was a lot of criticism. Well, well, the Seahawks should have taken Drew Bledsoe, but, you know, and there, his first year statistics proved to be better than Drew Bledsoe's. And they were like, well, maybe this guy really is the next Joe Montana, except in, during later years, Opposing teams later found out that he could only, like, I believe, throw to his right or to his left. One of the sides. He could only throw great to one side and the other he couldn't really throw that great to. So the defense has managed to adjust quickly and managed to cause Rick Meyer to, to be a bad quarterback. You know, the Seattle Seahawks managed to trade him to the Chicago Bears for a first round pick, but the Bears later found out how bad he was. So, yeah, it's like, don't always believe the hype because it will come back to haunt you. I mean, yeah, I mean, you obviously have to do a lot of research as far as throwing style is concerned with when picking a quarterback in the draft. Let's see. Number four, Lawrence Phillips, a running back for the St. Louis Rams. Now, Lawrence Phillips, he had two consecutive national titles playing for the University of Nebraska. But, of course, during his time in college, he got arrested for assaulting his ex-girlfriend, I believe dragging her down a flight of stairs. And there was a lot of criticism from pros already in the NFL namely Emmett Smith and criticizing him, you know, calling his decision stupid, that he completely blew his future. The Rams tried to take a chance with him, but he just kept getting arrested, kept getting fined, kept letting the team down. Um, and it's like Lawrence Phillips' attitude got the better of him, not only in his NFL career, not only in his football career, but in his life. You know, in 2006, you know, he was convicted for multiple counts of assault. And, yeah, he's pretty much spending the remainder of his sentence in prison. I believe he has, like, 20 years left of his sentence, uh, somewhere around there. I, I don't know exactly. But, yeah, Lawrence Phillips, it's like, if someone has character issues that lead to legal problems... You got to make sure that they're just fine. You know, you got to make sure they're not going to get in a lot of legal trouble. You got to make sure their behavior doesn't put the team in a deeper rut than they already are. Anyways, number three, Tony Mandrick, an offensive tackle for the Green Bay Packers. He was hyped up to be the incredible bulk, but it turned out to be the incredible bust. Because this guy, like, he was hyped up for his size, hyped up for being unstoppable. But there was a question, is this guy on steroids? And, you know, his performance on the field, it just, it was appalling. I mean, he was getting, like, thrown to the side by the defensive ends or the linebackers. And, you know, allowing way too many sacks. And it just didn't work out for him. I mean, yeah, he finished his career with the Indianapolis Colts playing alongside Peyton Manning, but still, I mean, I mean, it's another example of letting hype get the decide your, who you draft. I mean, you can't always let hype decide who you draft because it, it could end up being a big mistake. Anyways, number two, Jamarcus Russell, quarterback for the Oakland Raiders, and this guy was the ultimate definition of lazy in the NFL. He didn't want to give his best efforts all the time. It's like he, when he first got drafted, he held out for a lot more money than he was entitled to, you know, and he didn't really play his best. And it, and it showed on the field. I mean, yeah, he had, I mean, yeah, he had some decent statistics, like for quarterbacks who were drafted like way in the late rounds, but but he did not have the statistics of a first round draft pick. I mean, his his NFL career only lasted three seasons, and after that, you know, obviously no NFL team wanted to take a chance on Jamarcus Russell, so his NFL career is essentially over. 
And finally, the number one draft bust, you guessed it, Ryan Leaf, quarterback of the of the San Diego Chargers. And there was question as to who was going to be the better quarterback in that draft. Was it going to be Peyton Manning? Was it going to be Ryan Leaf? You know, the Chargers tried to get Peyton Manning, but obviously the Colts did not want to give up that first round over first pick overall. And so the Chargers essentially had no choice but to go with Ryan Leaf because none of the other quarterbacks were you know, were being hyped up. None of them, none of the other quarterbacks basically showed the same promise, but it came back to beat the Chargers hard as Ryan Leaf showed some of the worst statistics of any quarterback. I mean, I mean, in his third game in the NFL, I mean, he threw one for 15, only four yards, five turnovers, some were interceptions, some were fumbles. I mean, it was a disaster for the Chargers. And Ryan Leaf's immaturity even showed, both on the field and off the field. I mean, he had a lot of character issues with um, those, with the higher-ups. I mean, there was an incident where he was suspended for four games for swearing at Bobby Beathard, who was the general manager of the Chargers at the time, and... It just goes to show you that if you're going to draft a quarterback high, you got to beware. This guy could be a bust. This guy could be a hit, but hey. So that's my list on top 10 draft busts. It just goes to show that as a reminder, you can strike out realistically on someone who's hyped up to be a great NFL player. So... I look forward to watching the draft if NFL.com is or if if there is going to be a contest on picking a perfect draft, you know, picking everyone perfectly in the first round of the draft, then I'm definitely going to enter it because I'm going to be doing a lot of insane research as to who's going to land where for the first round of this draft and hopefully... I'll get rewarded for it, but who can say? You can never tell who's going to get drafted where exactly for the first 32 picks. I mean, yeah, you could have a good idea, but you could never know. But anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to doing another Top 10 list soon.